One of the things I love about kitchens is that they're so reflective of the person who cooks there. From the ingredients to the style, you get to see the nature of who's there, what they're cooking, and what they like to eat. Now, my kitchen might not be perfectly to your taste, and neither may be this cake that we're making together. But both of these things are a reflection of me, of my life at this moment, of my tastes and my desires and what I find beautiful. Your cake might taste different, your kitchen might look different, but isn't it great that we get to express ourselves in this way? The cake that I'm making today is an orange, cardamom, and olive oil cake. You'll notice that my sugar at the bottom of this bowl looks a little bit different than your standard white sugar. We haven't used white sugar in our kitchen in years, and instead, we use this whole dehydrated cane sugar called Rapidura. It also might seem strange to put olive oil in a cake, but olive oil keeps it really moist and adds a really wonderful flavor. We go to a lot of effort to source good citrus every year. And this cake feels like a perfect reflection of saying goodbye to the last of winter and saying hello to something a little more cheerful. My favorite kind of desserts and the kind that I often make in the kitchen are ones that aren't too sweet and aren't too fussy. So you can see I'm whipping this all up together in one big bowl. Sugar, eggs, milk, orange zest and orange juice, flour, salt, and baking powder. Really simple, but really high quality ingredients that come together so deliciously. That to me is such a wonderful reflection of the types of foods that we produce here in our kitchen. I bake my cakes with an all-purpose einkorn flour, really easy to digest, high in protein, and really buttery flavored, which makes them perfect for baked goods. Even something as simple as the flour that we choose, in a way, is a way that we can sort of express ourselves, show the things that we see to be important. I love using this flour and thinking of my friend Carla every time I do. As delicious as this cake is, today's video is not all about the cake. If you have a good eye, you may have noticed that something is a bit different in the kitchen. Do you see it yet?
Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Cottage Kitchen at the Elliott Homestead. This kitchen has changed so much over the last seven years. It was really, really stuck in the 80s when we moved in, even though it was built sometime in the early 1900s. We're not exactly sure. So what we have found in our time of peeling back the layers in this house is that this kitchen really has a lot to say. And it's taken us some time to get it to where it is today and functioning in the 21st century. How we have used the kitchen in the last seven years has also changed extensively. When we first remodeled the kitchen, we didn't really anticipate that we would be running our cooking community from right in this kitchen, or that we would be teaching workshops, or that we would even be doing this YouTube channel. So the demands on the kitchen continued to grow and grow. Part of that is really great, and part of that makes it a little bit challenging because this is the kitchen that our family actually eats in and uses every day. So today I wanted to walk you through the functionality of some pieces in our kitchen and introduce you to a new friend. So you may notice behind me that new friend, my new LaConche range. If you're familiar with this kitchen at all, you know that I brought in my first LaConche about six years ago. I named her Madame and she served us faithfully for those six years. But as these things change and as we continue to recipe test for our cooking community and our workshops, we realized that we needed to go bigger, more burners and more oven space. I was so happy with my past experience with LaConche that it was really no question what bigger range we would bring in. So I worked with the team at Art Culinaire to bring in this new Sully. We get a lot of questions about our range, about why we chose LaConche, how it's configured, how we use it. And that's kind of what I want to dive into today so that you can understand the equipment and why we chose what we chose. So the range behind me is called a Sully. It has two full-size ovens. One of them is a gas that we run off a propane tank and one of them is electric. So this is important because the electric range gets a little bit hotter than the propane and it also has the ability to broil food, which is really important. But the propane has this really nice moist heat that's really good for meats. So I use both of the ovens in different ways. The top of the range has seven different burners, which are usually full all the time because we use this stove all day, every day. Our last range we had for six years, it almost had no wear and tear. It had some love marks, but it was still in as great of condition as it was when it first arrived in our house. And that's just not something that you really see with modern appliances. The other piece of the puzzle that's valuable to us is the service that Art Culinaire offers. This is still a small family owned company and they treat it as such. It's a very intimate experience buying a LaConche. They make sure that you're really taken care of. Anytime there's been questions, anytime any issues have come up, they've been incredibly responsive. So this range is about 18 inches bigger than our last range, which is great because turns out when we ripped all the cabinetry out, we had extra room. I cook a lot in this kitchen. You probably cook a lot in your kitchen. And I wanted to show you how we've set it up for the most highly functional kitchen that I can imagine. There's been a lot of versions of this to land at this point. So let me walk you through it. So one of the biggest changes that we made when we redid our kitchen again was to switch out our wood countertops for Carrara marble. This was for two reasons, but the primary reason was just the cleanliness and the functionality of cleaning them up. Wood is a little bit trickier to clean and I was constantly getting dough stuck in the little cracks. So marble is just much cleaner and much sleeker. It's also really great for bread making, which we make a lot of. So this counter was originally just 80s counter and then it became wood countertops and now it's marble and that is where it will rest. I try to keep my counters fairly clean because there's so much rotating through here on any given day that I try to have the workspaces as cleared out as possible. Now that's not always the case and sometimes things sort of find their way onto the counter or it's a holiday or I'm decorating for something. But every once in a while, I just try to take a deep breath and just clear them off. And this is always the time of year where they're at their cleanest. So I keep a little canister here of my kitchen utensils. I keep my wooden spoons in a separate drawer. Wooden spoons are primarily what I cook with because I cook with a lot of enameled cookware and tinned cookware. And wooden spoons work great for that. 
but these utensils do not fit in the drawer as well as wooden spoons do. They get a little place here on the counter. Above the range, we keep most of our copper, though not all of it. These are all pans that are functioning and that get used daily. So I try to not keep anything here that doesn't actually get used. I have some pretty vintage pieces. I have some really beautiful copper stock pots. I have some that need to be retinned or repaired. Those don't get to stay up here. This is only for functioning pieces. So now that we've taken up this uh, bigger space with our range, it actually works out really well with our little piece of Lowe's butcher block. This is just something we bought directly off the shelf at Lowe's and we just placed it right on top of the refrigerator underneath here. Most people don't know that this is a refrigerator. This was one of my favorite purchases for the kitchen because the stand-up refrigerator we didn't really have a great place for. This is an old kitchen. It wasn't built with a refrigerator pocket. It didn't really have a place for it. It always just felt so out of place. So we ripped out the lower cabinetry and we put in this fridge and freezer combo. No one knows what this is. They assume it's just drawers or a dishwasher, but it's actually a refrigerator on the top <laughs> and a freezer on the bottom. We have our big walk-in refrigerator down in our root cellar. So I just keep things in here that we use constantly like cheeses and milk, extra butter and condiments. The freezer has an ice producer and then it just keeps a couple of things, but we have four other big chest freezers up in the barn. This fridge and freezer right here was actually really helpful to the functioning of the kitchen. Cause if you think you're standing here at the stove, right? And you're moving, okay, that's only a step away and everything else is just a step away. So that means I don't have to take many movements at all to get what I need. My pots and pans are here, freezer stuff, fridge stuff, and utensils are right there. So on this butcher block, I try to just keep essentials. Inevitably, things find their way. They creep their way onto this counter. And when I deep clean my kitchen every week, I've got to peel stuff back. But what I have found so far to be the most functioning is to keep my cutting boards. So I have a little collection of cutting boards here. And then I just keep what I call my essentials, butter, salt, pepper, parsley, garlic, chili flakes, and olive oil. So just the little things that I will constantly reach for almost with every dish. And that way they're well within arm's reach here. Now, one other piece that we finally added, this was a year in the making, is to finish out the marble and put in this backsplash. So this functions just like any other backsplash. It just keeps splatters and things from getting onto the wallpaper. It's really easy to clean and really wipeable. The bonus of this was that we were finally able to cover some kind of jaggedy old corners here that we were constantly covering up because the paint and the wallpaper didn't quite match up when we did it, knowing we were gonna put this marble in. So it finally, for the first time, actually looks finished in person. I know you can't see all those nitty gritty details in the video, and it's a really beautiful kitchen in a lot of ways, but every kitchen has its little dark corners that you know, just don't look at it, don't, don't pay too much attention. And it feels really nice to have some of those pieces finished up finally.